I'm Colin May. My handle is at Colin May, it's spelled with two L's. I'm here at H1604 in Vancouver. My dad um, characterized himself once as a Linux kernel hacker. That meant that when I was growing up, I had I always had this resource in the house who I could just ask all kinds of questions about anything software that I was working on, and that was incredibly helpful while I was learning to program. I would say that I started really hacking when I was about 15. Maybe when I was about 13, I worked on a little bit of uh, web CTFs, but I didn't really start doing very much until I turned about 15. Most of my friends know that I'm a hacker. It's kind of hard to explain why I'm being whisked off to Vancouver for a couple days without mentioning why, but I tell them all about it anyway. And um, I don't think a lot of them really completely understand what I do, but just like with my parents, they are willing to support me in whatever it is I want to do. Since my dad um, was, as he put it, a Linux kernel hacker, he knew exactly what I was getting into and absolutely loved it. Um, I don't know if my mom really en entirely understands what I'm doing, but she thinks it's cool and she's gonna support me doing whatever it is she thinks I'm doing. <laughs> I was always really interested in video game consoles. I watched a lot of hacking talks that people would do about that and always thought that it was really cool. And then um, a couple years ago, the Nintendo Switch came out and I decided that I wanted to get involved with hacking that. So I decided that I wanted to go all in. So I wrote all my own tooling for um, trying to analyze binaries. And I wrote my own emulators and everything. And I used that to find a couple cool bugs. And that's how I learned a lot of what I know about uh, native exploitation. Usually you get code to read and you can find bugs by reading code instead of blindly guessing where they are, but sometimes you get that on a web program too. You can like download the source code. The other thing that I think makes it really appealing is that um, it's really rewarding when you actually get a exploit to work. I think that it takes a lot, of, it can take a lot of effort to get things working and it's kind of um, a small niche that there aren't a whole lot of people who can do that. The 50M CTF was put together by uh, Dakin, and um, I'd known him from my work on the Switch before, and he had suggested to me, hey, I made the CTF, you should try it. And I was like, okay. And I got like a couple stages through, and I realized that it was getting kind of late and I had to go to sleep. I had to go to school in the morning, and but I wanted to like be the first one to get through this. So I teamed up with Space Raccoon, who I had previously worked with on more of the Hacker 101 CTF challenges. And uh, I, he worked overnight. Um, he developed a script to run a timing attack against one of the CTF levels. And after that, we worked together, and we were the second ones to complete the CTF. It is definitely exhausting hacking for hours upon hours straight. Um, I personally just, every once in a while, I get bored, I get up, I'm kind of restless like that. Go walk around, help clear my head, or even just think about what I've been working on and uh, I find that that helps a lot rather than just sitting there trying to focus the entire time. It's like the more you try to focus on something the less you're actually going to be able to focus. I was talking to uh, one of the customers and they had asked me if I'd installed this tool called Drozer on my device, which I had not. I asked him, what's Drozer? And I looked it up and it was this tool that did exactly what I needed to do and had been essentially just rewriting myself. 
Getting to interact with the customer teams, I find that it is really, really helpful to be able to sit down with someone from the target that you're hacking on and just ask them questions, and it saves so much time over trying to figure some things out yourself.